Fear not, facing our fears by fearing the Lord. Welcome to VBS 2020 Online. Welcome to day five of Bethlehem's Online Vacation Bible School. I'm Eric again, and it's our last day, which is a little bit sad. But that means we're going to review all that we've learned so far. So on the first day, we learned that when you're afraid to take the first step, fear not. For God is with you. And that is great news. Each day we also learn a memory verse. And your memory might be better than mine, because I'm having a hard time with all of them. But Isaiah 41.10 was the verse for the first day. And it says, Do not worry, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will make you strong and will help you. I will support you with my right hand that saves you. And then we learned about Moses and Mary and the shepherds, all who took a first step that was a little bit scary, but God and his angels helped them to make that first step. And we know that God does the same thing for you. We also learned our theme song on that first day. And so I want you to stand on up and sing I will not be afraid.
great singing, guys. On day two, we learn prayer and worship helps us to fear not. And we also learn a memory verse. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Do not worry about anything, but pray and ask God for everything you need. And when you pray, always give thanks. Then we learned about Daniel and his three friends, who even though they would be punished for praying and worshiping, they still did. We pray that God's Spirit would help us to be so bold to always pray and to worship. Why don't you pray with me right now? Uh, fold your hands, bow your heads, and repeat after me. Dear God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Thank you for protecting us. Help us to always look to you. And know that because of Jesus, we can fear not. Help us to end VBS well. And all God's people said, Amen. All right, it's time for our next song that we learned on day number two, which was Fear Not. Stand on up. On day three, we learn that God has made us part of the family. And what was the phrase of the day, Shank? God has made us his children, fear not. And we memorized 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Everyone who is a child of God has the power to win against the world. It is our faith that wins the victory against the world. You look real cute with that bow tie there, Shank. 
Why are you wearing it? Pastor Jeff said we were supposed to suit up. We were? I I hadn't heard that. Well, it's always good to look spiffy. I guess I'll go change. But that will take a lot of time. Now with the power of TV, I can change in a snap. Wow, you look great. Thanks, so do you. It is the last day of VBS, so I guess we should dress up. And it's been like a year since I wore a tie. Now we're ready to finger paint. That sounds messy. Oh, Pastor just texted us, and he says the phrase for the day is actually, suit up. God has given us his armor, fear not. So I guess we're supposed to put on a suit of armor and not these fancy clothes? There isn't a whole lot of armor out there for sheep. Well, maybe it means that God is our armor and we're protected by him and his word, and so we should dig into that. I guess that makes sense. Well, at least we still look good. Are you going to go change now? Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye, Shank. All right. So, we know our phrase of the day, right? So, suit up. God has given us his armor. Fear not. All right. So, join me if you did on that last one. Suit up. God has given us his armor. Fear not. And now we're going to sing Be Bold. Martin Luther here to pop you up. And many of you have been asking throughout the week, yes, you seem to know your Bible a little bit, but are you really swole? Are you pumped up? Do you really have a bodybuilder's physique? And of course the answer is yes. Good to see the face right there. Does that answer your question? Of course I'm ripped. Of course I'm strong. Of course I'm a bodybuilder. I've been working out. And if you too would like a body just like this, all you have to have is access to Bethlehem's costume closet. I hope that you too can one day look just like this. But more important than being big and strong in the bicep and the six pack and the pecs, it's good to be strong in the Lord. And so we are going to be looking at Ephesians here, but I look a little silly right now, so I'm going to get back into my monk robes to get into the book of Ephesians. You can start looking for it right now. The other reason I am so strong is because I have the full armor of God. So we're going to learn more about the full armor of God today in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, and a little bit of 11. It's on page 1178. All right, hopefully you found it. Now we're at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11a. Let's read it together. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his great power. Wear the full armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10, 11a. Hoo-ha! 
All right, let's put it up there on the board. Let's read it together. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his great power. Wear the full armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10, 11. A. Hoo-ha! Very good. Let's do it again and let's get rid of my favorite word, the U. There's no U? All right. What is like a U but not in there? Weird. All right. Let's get rid of strong. We've been learning a lot about that one this week. And let's get rid of power. Because we've already got the power, don't we? Finally, be strong in the Lord and his great power. Wear the full armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10, 11, 8. Hoo-ha! All right, so let's get rid of the Lord and his. All right, let's get rid of Bell there. That will help us out. All right, finally, be strong in the Lord and his great power. Wear the full armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10, 11, 8. Hoo -ah! Nice, 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 nice. Ooh, can we do more? It's the last day. I feel like we can go a little farther. Let's get rid of armor. Let's get rid of Ephesians. That's a big word. All right. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his great power. Wear the full armor of God. Ephesians 6, 10, 11, 8. Hoo -ah! Nicely done. You guys, so good. So awesome to spend this week with you. Stay strong in the Lord. And remember, suit up. God has given us his armor. Fear not. Auf Wiedersehen. Our Bible story for today can be found in Ephesians chapter 6, starting at verse 10, which is where our memory verse was from, you'll remember, as well. And so that's page number 1178, and you should turn there. And Sue Temi and her dog Ozzy are going to tell the story today. Ozzy apparently figured out how to get online and ordered a whole bunch of stuff that he shouldn't have. So don't do that. Don't order things online without your parents' permission. That's, that's not, not a good choice. However, watch. Let me guess, another one for Ozzy? Yep. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Just put them on the pile. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Guys, so what's up with all these packages? Why are you order so much stuff? For protection? What do you need protected from? Okay, the squirrel wasn't nice to you. Yeah, he was kind of teased you, didn't he? Oh, and the neighbor dog too? Wasn't very friendly? Oh, I made you so sad, I'm sorry. Oh, and the coronavirus, I know, it's got everybody kind of scared. So you decided to order some stuff to protect yourself. I got it. Okay. Uh, let's take a look. Let's see what you got. What's in this one? 
of a bike helmet. That's your helmet of salvation. Okay. Helmet of salvation. Got it. Let's see. Can I put it right there. Okay. What else did you get? What's in this one? Hmm. Yeah, you like that helmet, huh? How about this one, buddy? Come here. Come sit back down so we can take a look at this one. Oh, look at this. A belt. This looks like it would fit me. What is it? Oh, okay. The belt of truth. Got it. Helmet of salvation. Belt of truth. Let's see what else we got. What's in here? What's in that one? Let's see. Hey, pretty snazzy. Ozzy. Oh, shield of faith. That's your shield of faith. Gotcha. Shield of faith. All right, here's the next one. What's in this one? What is it? Ah, pretty fancy. What is it? Breastplate of righteousness uh, to protect your heart, I guess. All right, breastplate of righteousness. We got two more. What else did you get? Oh, it's a big one. Cowboy boots? Oh, uh, not cowboy boots. Gospel boots. Gotcha. Gospel boots. Don't know what that is, but okay. All right, last one. What do we have here? It's a long one. Let's see. Ooh. Oh my goodness. It's sharp. What is it? A sword. Kind of rusty. It's kind of dangerous too. So that's all your stuff you ordered for protection, huh? Well, where'd you hear about this stuff? Okay. In the Bible? All right. Let me get my Bible. Let's take a look. I'll be right back. Okay. What part of the Bible were you looking at? Put on our glasses. Ephesians. The book of Ephesians. Okay. It's way back here. What chapter? Six. Ephesians chapter six. Okay, here I see it. You want to read along with me? Here's your glasses. You can read. That's on. All right. It says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Oh, the armor of God. Get it. I got it. I'm not sure that's what it was talking about, though. Um, let's see. Later on, it says... Oh, you don't need them? Okay, I'll just read it to you. Um, so stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. I got it. The belt of truth and with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace oh gospel boots got it in addition to all this take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay, well, I see where you get it, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure that's what it's talking about. Should we, who can we call to help us figure out who? Oh, Eric. Okay, let's call Eric. Hey, Eric. Hey, do you have a minute? Yeah, sure. Sue, good to see you. What's up? Good. Good to see you. Hey, well, Ozzy and I were having a discussion about 
how God protects us and he wants to give us his peace. Well, so Ozzy's your dog, right? You're talking yeah. with your dog? Yeah, talking with my dog. Hey, it's not as weird as talking to a sheep. Fair, fair. I suppose I, I probably deserve that. Yeah, <laughs> God definitely protects us and he wants to give us his peace too. Yeah, right. So that's what we were talking about. And so here's a little backstory. Ozzy's been kind of afraid lately, kind of nervous and anxious, you know, with the coronavirus going on and other stuff. And so um, he heard about the armor of God. And yeah, he's yeah, wondering. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yeah, I know about the armor of God. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Your dog knows about it. That's, that's impressive. Yeah, and he ordered it online. He ordered God's armor online. How does a dog order something online to begin with? That's crazy. He, well, he ordered it on Amazon and it, it all came and he tried it on, it, except for the boots. Uh, the boots don't fit, but everything else fits pretty well. So may, I think he thinks he's good to go. Okay, well, I, a dog in clothes is pretty funny, so I'd like to see that. But you can't just order the armor of God online. It's not physical armor. It's not something, most of it isn't something that you can touch or wear like clothes. It's spiritual tools that God gives us to stay strong and safe with him. So like the shield of faith is God's power to protect us from lies or temptation and helps us to stand firm and trust God. Okay, that makes sense. So then, like, the belt of truth would be God's true promise that he loves us and that he's always with us, right? Yeah, and that he will always keep his promises. We trust every word that he says in his word. And the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, and protective shoes or boots all keep us safe as we go about our lives as God's people sharing his love and his forgiveness with others. And the sword of the spirit, the Bible, which he tells us all we need to know in it, about himself and about us and how he gave up his own son, Jesus, to die for us. So we can have peace and safety. And this is something we can touch. That sounds great. And you know what? That's way better than that rusty old little sword that he ordered online. So, so we don't have to be afraid. Right. And we don't have to get tetanus either. <laughs> Very good. And so, well, thank you so much for clearing that up. Now we can suit up and God has given us his armor. Fear not. Fear not. <laughs> of all the things that are talked about, the belt of truth, the shoes of readiness, the helmets, the breastplate, those are all armor. They're there to protect you. They're a lot like a shield. And there's only one offensive weapon, and that's the sword, which is God's word. And so God's word cuts into us sometimes. Sometimes it tells us we're doing bad things. But when it does that, it also shows us the answer. The answer is always Jesus. And so it cuts into us and hurts us sometimes to let us know that we're wrong, but it also shows us how to be forgiven and how to get back on the right path with God through Jesus. And it doesn't just do that for you, but it does that for others. So don't keep it in its sheath. Open it. And that reminds me of day four. What did we learn yesterday? Oh, that's right. Jesus walks us through storms. Fear not. And we had a Bible verse. It's Exodus 14, 14. And it says, you only need to remain calm. The Lord will fight for you. So God and his sword and his angels are fighting for you. And that's pretty amazing. Next up. It's science time, and there's a huge explosion that's going to happen, and so you might need the full armor of God. So you might want to get your shield prepared, because it's pretty amazing. Watch. Hi, I'm Jackson, and this is science time. Today we're talking about how God helps us in a big way. So for our big way experiment, we're going to have a big experiment. A little bit of our super secret 
blue liquid to add to our other blue liquid. As you can see, I am wearing my safety glasses because in science time, we are always safe. Wear any required equipment that you need to keep yourself safe. And now we're gonna see just how big because when we add God, we're gonna see just how big the reaction gets. Ready? Look at that. It's very warm because reactions can cause changes in temperature, color, or an, any number of things. I got to pick our color and I picked blue again. Just remember that God always helps you. So, suit up. God has given you his armor. Fear not. And that's all we got for you guys today on Science Time. I'm Jackson, and this is our outro. For those of you that don't go to Bethlehem, you can take comfort knowing that Jackson and I are not part of the band, we're not part of the worship team, we're not part of the choir. And neither is the next guy who's going to speak. I'm really excited for you to hear from our pastor, Pastor Jeff. Hello, friends. My name is Pastor Jeff Shearer. I'm pastor here at Bethlehem, for those of you who may not know me. And it's kind of hard to know me with my mask on. We wear these masks for protection. And you today have been learning about the armor of God and how the armor of God protects us with the breastplate of righteousness and the sword of the spirit and the helmet of salvation. So the mask that we wear is like that armor in the sense that it protects us. And God uses these as he uses the armor of prayer in Ephesians chapter 6 that you learned about today to protect you, to give you the confidence that you can live each day, confident that Jesus is with you, loving you. I wanted to share with you a story, though, about David. You're going to have the chance to read his story in 1 Samuel 17 later today. It's part of your um, personal study, if you'd like to read the story. It's a fun story. It's David and Goliath. You probably have seen a, a cartoon version of David and Goliath, or maybe a, a movie version of it. David and Goliath is the story of David, who is much smaller than Goliath, coming to battle. And Dave, Goliath, if you read the story, Goliath is a Philistine. He is tall. Um, he is probably you know, seven, eight feet tall, according to the uh, He could play for the lake. Pray, pray for the Lakers. My grandson will appreciate that. Or he could play for the Blazers. Yay! However, he's not a basketball player. He's a soldier. And he is decked out in the army of the Philistines, the armor of the Philistines. He has got his helmet on. He's got his shield. He's got his sword. He is challenging anyone from the army of Israel to come and do battle with him. And so Saul, the king, tries to get his soldiers out there, but none of them will go, except for a young boy named David. David, who has been anointed, been, been picked to be the next king by God, but not everyone knows that yet. So David agrees to fight Goliath. And so they bring armor for David. If you read the story, you see the armor doesn't fit. It's for someone bigger than David. David's maybe 10, 11, 12, something like that, maybe your age. And he's out there facing Goliath. And he goes out to face Goliath armed with two things, five rocks, five smooth stones from a river, and the name of God. He goes out on the battlefield and he tells 
Goliath. That Goliath might as well give up now because he's going to lose because he is going up against the Lord God Almighty. He is going up against God himself with all his angels. Goliath looks at David and says, you're, you're puny. You're a kid. Who are you to come up against me? And David says, I'll warn you again. You're going up against the Lord God Almighty. He's going to give you over to defeat. Now, David has picked five stones. Why does he pick five? People argue about that. David's not around to tell us, but for sure, he knew that if he picked five, one of those stones God would use to accomplish the purpose of defeating Goliath. It happened to be the first one. So God used that stone that David threw in his slingshot at Goliath to find the one spot that Goliath was exposed, his forehead. Under his helmet, above his faceplate, there was a place where the stone found its true mark and knocked Goliath down, defeating him. God used a stone. God used David. God uses you. God uses me. And while it's sometimes frightening to be used by God, while it's sometimes overwhelming, the things we face, you know, school is not starting the way it should. Life is different than it was six months ago. And maybe you're a little worried about that. Maybe you're a little anxious about that. But remember David's example. He goes to fight with God's help. He goes to fight Goliath, goes to take on the giants with God's help, with God's word, with God's promise. And so do you, and so do I. So that we can truly listen to his encouragement and not be afraid. Fear not, as you've been learning. Maybe I should say, fear not, as you've been learning. Trust him. Look forward to seeing you again, whether it's when we start worshiping again on Sundays, you get to join us for worship, or maybe next year at Vacation Bible School, when we'll have some more truth, some more stories to tell you about God's love for you. Until then, count on his promises and trust him and fear not. Hello, friends. Welcome back to Carrie's Craft Corner for day number five. Here we are at the end of our week of Vacation Bible School. It's been good to be with you, even if we haven't been able to be in the same room. It's good to know that we're still gathered together, praising our God, learning about him, and doing fun crafts. Well, we are ready for day number five now. And um, today we've been talking all about how God suits us up with his armor, right? The belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. Now the sword of the spirit, that's one that we are going to put on our shield today. Yes? Like the sword in this sword in the shield, like um like can fill up the armor. Yeah, that's right. God gives us people, God gives us his word, God gives us his spirit, all these things to be our armor, to be the things that protect us from the scary things of this world, from the things that we don't always understand. So to do our sword, we're going to do something kind of tricky. We're going to make our sword look like a cross to remind us that the ultimate armor that we have is the, the knowledge, the salvation, the truth that Jesus died for us on the cross. Okay, so this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to draw it upside down so that you can follow me at home. You make a line, straight line, and then parallel line next to it. And that means that they're the exact same going next to each other. Then I'm going to draw a dot in between those two. And that's going to be my guide to make the point. Okay. Then I'm going to come up top. I'm going to close it off. That kind of looks like 
the base of a sword right now, right? Or like, or like a um, screw. <laughs> or a screw or a nail. Sure. The... Yep. Okay. Then to finish my cross, do a line, another set of parallel lines, and connect them. Then we have a cross sword. that kind of looks like a sword. And I think it's best then to color it in when you paint it to color it in. You know? I think that makes it look a little bit better. Sorry. Not scribbled, obviously. Let me show you on my shield. I did it. So here's my sword cross right there. You see, I have my little point down at the bottom, but then I really wanted to be sure that everyone could see that it was a cross. So then I took my black and I did the cross over the top. Okay. Now we, um, thought it might be kind of fun to make some special colors. So I talked to my kids before we um, got ready for this art time and we made some special colors and I want to tell you about them too in case you want to make some colors. It was really easy just to use the lid of your cups and since this is the last day for our craft corner um, you'll probably be throwing these away and so you could have your lid that you would use and then not uh, have a problem for any other day. So I um, really wanted orange. Corey and I wanted orange. Mm -hmm. So we took red, and what other color did we take, Cor? Yellow. We took red and yellow and mixed it in the top. You can see this was the yellow lid. We just mixed it right in the top of that lid, and that's our orange. Cullen, what color did you want? I wanted gray, and I did the yellow. I did the white lids, and then I got a little bit of black and then mixed it. That's right. He wanted gray, so we had white and black. Lena, what color did you want? I wanted purple. That's right. She wanted purple. So we took the blue lid and did some blue and red. And oh, friends, look at that purple. Isn't that beautiful? I think that's really pretty. Then I also wanted kind of a, a deeper red, like a maroon, pinky red kind of that. You can make green by taking what colors? Do you remember, guys? Um, yellow and Yellow and blue. That's right. Blue. Yellow and blue would make green. What if we wanted to make pink? Do you know? Red and white. Red and white. Very good. Very good. Um, I think, I know there's other colors, but you can play around and see how, how you, uh, what colors you want. As long as an adult says it's okay. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead, Lena. We're going to do your sword, right? Yeah. Okay. And where did you want your sword to go? Oh, my sword. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Right there. So a little sword yeah. in between. Yeah. Can it go up to here? Can it go that far? Or no? That far. Okay. All right. So we've got to make our parallel lines. You want to hold this with me? Here we go. Line. Okay. And then parallel. So we need to come over here a little bit. Line. Good. Then we make our dot right on the baby's head. Okay, and then we make our point from here, come here. Okay, and then we're gonna close off the top. Okay, and then we need our crossbar. Let's get a little bit more. Let's just come down here, line, parallel line, close it off. I think we'll make this side just a little bit longer. There we go. Close it off and then color it in. You can do the color in part on the other, right? Good. All right. Hey, when you're done with that, if you wanted to add some more decoration to your shield, you sure could. I just took some paint and kind of went around the side with the red that I made. And then I took Lena's purple and did another layer. I went to my footprints and I took a little bit of paint on my finger and I just kind of smeared it. It was really light because I still wanted to be able to see the white, but just kind of added a little bit. I did some accent lines with my hands and my music notes and my cloud. I know that you will have fantastic ideas how you want to make it your shield. Hey guys, it's been really good to be with you. And it's sheer awesome to be reminded that when we are scared to take the first step, we can always come to God with prayer and worship. Storms of life, God is with us. We are called God's children. And we are, are suited up. We are given so many things from God 
to protect us in this life, to help us through this life. So we absolutely can move forward and fear not. Bye guys. Hey friends. All right, just one last step to finish off your shield. Remember how we had the lines, the guidelines to help us with each section? Now is the time since you have it all painted, all set for our week. Now we get to add the cross at the end. So using those lines as your guide, go ahead and draw, paint the line down, and then figure out about where you want the cross and add the cross to it. I'm gonna do mine, all right? Let's see here. So it's so handy to have that line drawn on it. I can just go right over the top. I chose to do white because I still wanted to be able to see, really see all the other things that I had on my shield. So you do whatever color you want. And I'll probably go back when this dries and add another coat. Uh, I'm not going to go all the way. I think right about to there. Alright, I'm going to add my crossbar. I think it's pretty neat to have the cross as the main first thing you see on our shields, reminding us that we go into life with Jesus, our Savior, which gives us all the reason in the world to fear not. Right? Because his love for us, shown on the cross, reminds us over and over that God is with us, so we fear not. See you later. Oh, you caught me writing a letter. Harry Carey here. Do you like writing letters? I'm writing one to a friend right now just to let him know I care. The Bible is also a letter. It's God's love letter to us. It's also a collection of letters. After the Gospel and the book of Acts, the only book of history in the New Testament, we find the books of the epistles. Epistle is a fancy word that means letter. Lots of them were written by Paul. He wrote 13 of them, often written to churches that he helped to start. Some were written to some of his pastor friends, but that's how you can tell which one is which. is based off of the title. So Romans was written to the people in, you guessed it, Rome. That's right. Then we've got 1 Corinthians. It was written to the people in Corinth. Believe it or not, 2 Corinthians also written to the people in Corinth. Then we've got Galatians written to the people in, you guessed it, Galatia. Then we've got Ephesians written to Ephesus. You might not have gotten that one. It's a little bit different. Tricky, tricky. Then we've got Philippians written to the people of Philippi. We've got Colossians written to the people of Colossus. We've got Thessalonians written to the people of Thessalonica. Also written to them was 2 Thessalonians, believe it or not. Then we get to 1 and 2 Timothy, who was a pastor friend of Paul, much younger, who was learning the ways of wisdom. Then we've got Titus. Uh, who's also another pastor, and then Philemon, who may have been a pastor, but we do know he was a businessman. And Paul had ran into one of his employees and worked some stuff out there. So Paul was writing all of these things because he was in chains often. Because when you spread God's good news, there were consequences. And most of the time, it meant you went to jail. So Paul spent a lot of time in jail, which is sad, but that meant he had lots of time to write to all of these churches to let them know how a church should be run and how God could love them best. So that's pretty cool. But then we get into some other epistles that weren't written by Paul. There's Hebrews, which tells us all how about all of those books in the Old Testament, how all of them are pointing to Jesus in the New Testament. Then we've got James. It was written by, not Paul, you guessed her, written by James. Very good. Then we've got 1st and 2nd Peter, both written by Peter. Then we've got 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, all written by John. Then we've got Jude, and written by Jude. Then we've got Revelation, 
Revelation is also written by John, and it's the only book of the Bible that's got dragons in it. That's pretty awesome. And it's a book of prophecy. It's not just a letter. It tells about the end times. Spoiler alert, Jesus wins. That's how the Bible ends. Actually, Jesus wins is kind of a summary of the entire Bible. In Christ, we have the victory. In Christ, we have God's grace, we have His forgiveness, and all of it can be found in your Bible. So spend time reading it, dig into the book of Mark. Thank you for a great week, guys. Bye. To summarize our week, I wrote a poem all about it. And I'm going to say a line, and you're going to repeat that line, and there's some motions that go along with them. So you're going to do that too. And you're going to do that along with Shank. And Shank's not very good with the motions, but you will be, right? I think so. All right, Shank, are you ready? Absolutely. Are you guys ready? Okay, then. Stand on up and repeat after me. At V B. S. We had so much fun. At VBS, we had so much fun. Learning what our God has done. Learning what our God has done. Before it started, we got a Bible and a shield. Before it started, we got a Bible and a shield. I didn't know why it was out of left field. I didn't know why it was out of left field. Then I learned the Bible is a sword. Then I learned the Bible is a sword. It's a library containing God's word. It's a library containing God's word. And the shield is God's armor of protection. And the shield is God's armor of protection. When trouble comes, God will be my deflection. When trouble comes, God will be my deflection.
On Monday, we learn to fear not our first baby steps. On Monday, we learn to fear not our first baby steps. Martin Luther showed off his biceps. Martin Luther showed off his biceps. Lego shepherds ran to Jesus. Lego shepherds ran to Jesus. In my Bible, I found Genesis. In my Bible, I found Genesis. On Tuesday, we learn the power of prayer and worship. On Tuesday, we learn the power of prayer and worship. More powerful than bacon and syrup. More powerful than bacon and syrup. God overcame lions and fires. It was wild. God overcame lions and fires. It was wild! On Wednesday, we learned of Esther and becoming God's child. On Wednesday, we learned of Esther and becoming God's child. My shield got painted to look awesome. My shield got painted to look awesome! Harry Carey was crazy and his hair looked like a possum. Harry Carey was crazy and has the hair of a possum. On Thursday, we learned Jesus slept and walked through storms on water. On Thursday, we learned Jesus slept and walked through storms on water. I wonder if Peter and he saw an otter. I wonder if Peter and he saw an otter. Finally, we learned we've got God's armor. Finally, we've learned we've got God's armor. When you're part of God's church, nothing can harm her. When you're part of God's church, nothing can harm her. So when trouble comes, fear not. So when trouble comes, fear not. Because Jesus loves you a whole stinking lot. Because Jesus loves you a whole stinking lot. Great job, Shank. Great job, you guys. Let's sit back down. Thank you for a great week of VBS. Remember, with God on your side, you have nothing to fear. Depend on Him. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you for a great week of fun getting into your Word. Thank you for being our Savior. Forgive our sins. Help us to not be afraid of first steps or storms. Help us to know that we are your children who can always come to you in prayer and worship, and that your armor, your angels, and you surround us. Help us to continue to read your word and learn from it, and find your love and forgiveness within it, so we can know we don't need to worry or fear, because Jesus has given us all we need by living a perfect life, dying, and rising for us. And all God's people said, Amen. All right. So at 11 o'clock on Friday the 21st, there's going to be a Zoom meeting, which means that we can see and talk to each other face-to-face -face online. And your parents have information about that. We also want your parents or grandparents to film you singing and doing the hand motions to two songs. One is I Will Not Be Afraid, and the other is Goodness of God. And we're going to put those into our worship service next week that you can see online. That would be awesome. We do have worship services online each week. They're about an hour, and we'd love for you to check them out. There's always a children's message, and I love to go out to people's homes and film their kids in the yard and have them bring the Bible story to life. So if you'd like me to do that, I would love to do that. Uh, really, really looking forward to seeing you guys face to face again. That will be amazing. Uh, and then trust in God's promise that he's bigger than our fear. Suit up. God has given us his armor. Fear not. Bye.